This is Mari Robson of Love Lulu Creative, a podcast that supports and celebrates artists and creative entrepreneurs while giving back to the community in a unique and meaningful way. This is episode number 29, and I am so excited about my episode today with the very incredibly talented Kelly May Krenz. Oh, I don't even know where to begin. I mentioned on the episode that I fell down a rabbit hole on her website because she has done so many things as an artist, as a graphic designer, as an illustrator, as a mixed media artist. She teaches online courses and she just recently came out with now, of course, add this, her new collection of fabric for free spirit. And I just can't believe how talented she is and her story and her evolution is amazing. You guys are going to just glean so much information from this and she offers such positive words of advice. It's just a really uplifting and inspiring episode. Definitely pour yourself a nice cup of coffee or tea or glass of wine. You're going to really like this one. And by the way, if you are liking these episodes, if you would subscribe to the channel, I would deeply appreciate it and share it with your creative friends because these are powerhouse artists and they are sharing how they have done it. So please share away and let's all support one another and support the arts. Stay tuned. Good morning, Kelly. I am beyond excited to have you on the podcast. I I don't even know where to begin. You have so many accomplishments and I'm really excited to have to share your journey because you have done so many different things as an artist and I think it's going to be so helpful to to hear how it's all evolved for you. I am absolutely honored to be here and super excited to share any bits of wisdom that I have learned in my bazillion years of being a designer <laughs> illustrator and I just so admire your platform. I love how you're doing your scholarship fund and everything that you have created, I think is so mindfully lovely and well done. So I'm honored to be here and I'm super excited to talk with you. Everybody always makes me tear up when they do. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you. Um, thank well you. You just had a huge thing happen. You just had your uh, new fabric collection come out with Free Spirit. And I can't wait to talk to you about that, but I, I really like to go back to the beginning so people can really see the evolution of how you can have a career in the arts. And so, absolutely. so when did you, when did it all begin? And was, was it something you always knew or is it something that came about in high school or how, how did the story begin? Um, it's something I've always known. I actually for real knew when I was six years old, um, we had a little art thing. I think I was, I was in first grade and it had something to do with a lamb and, and gluing the cotton balls on the lamb. I remember that. Instead of gluing them on the lamb, I glued them in the sky and made clouds. And then I decorated the lamb, you know, with my crayons and whatever. And my teacher, Mrs. Johnson, at the end of that whole deal said, um, Kelly is a very good artist. She should, she should do this. This should be her life. And mm -hmm. I thought, how interesting that, you know, I didn't realize I was little. I just realized that, you know, I got a good grade um, <laughs> and I had fun and I didn't put them on the, but I also realized that I was different. And because there were, you know, 15 lambs and mine was completely different and I didn't feel like I'd made a mistake. So I thought that that was a really good something. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it as a six-year-old anymore, but I remember feeling like, cool, you know, like uh -huh. that's okay that I was yeah. different. And I never really took it as a negative, um, which, you know, maybe I should have, I don't know, but no, I did not at all. I um, love that. Millions different of millions of different ways to, to approach an art project. And you just, we're being you and did it differently. Exactly. You didn't I, follow exactly. the norm. <laughs> and the thing that I loved growing up is I was a really big, I was really huge into playing Barbies with my friends. And I would just be so inventive with, you know, taking a Kleenex box and turning that into a twin bed or a double mm -hmm. bed. But at that time, Barbie didn't sleep with Ken. So that was, <laughs> um, 
but I remember just being, you know, I cleared everything off the shelves in my bedroom and I turned it into a condo and I, I pretend, you know, I was an interior designer and I did the wallpaper and the bedding and I just have always loved creating and always, you know, since I was forever have loved pattern and making things look cooler and taking things that I have and making things from them rather than go out and buy a whole kit. You know, I'm, I've been much more organic in the fact of I just use what I have and I've always been able to make kind of cool things with it. That's um, extremely evident <laughs> in all of your art for sure. Thank you. Thanks. So, so then you had that kind of in your six year old mind and then did you Go I to did. High school I, and take classes in art, and was that when I you? Took, were you know, they didn't have extra classes in art, or you know, there wasn't any like you can sign up for three art classes and skip gym or anything like that. <laughs> um, I grew up in a really small town, a little river town in Iowa called Comanche, and it was just a total normal public school. If normal is a thing anymore, but just a small little school. And um, I loved my art teachers, though, I have to say. I could name every one of them, which is crazy after all these years. Um, but I I did, like, I was asked when I was in high school, like, hey, there's a scholarship to go to, blah, 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 and do you want to apply? And I always did. I would always give my art and, and apply. And um, I end up ended up getting a scholarship my first year of college I wanted to go to Iowa State University because they had a huge design program and, and they were really very sought after even though the University of Iowa which their teams are the Hawkeyes and my dad was just like just a consummate Hawkeye fan. <laughs> so when I said you know well I'm a I, you know only child and I want to go to Iowa State and my dad's like, really, Bug? I'm like, yeah, I know, but like, they don't have good designers there. Well, they probably do, but they weren't like known for it. So long story short, I ended up going to a private Catholic college because I got a scholarship to go there for my first year in art. Oh, great. And, what college uh, was that? It was called Mount St. Clair. And the sad thing is it was only a half hour away from home. Like I wanted to go, I wanted to get out, you know, oh, I wanted sure. to like, uh -huh. go away. And so I didn't, I did graduate high school at 17. So I was young. So my parents were kind of like, you know, why don't you stay close for that first year? And if you make the Dean's list, then we'll let you go to Iowa state the next year. So that would have been my sophomore year. And um, so you bet I, and, and by the way, I wasn't even Catholic and I won this scholarship. So. <laughs> That was pretty incredible. Uh -huh. um, but I ended up taking a lot of art classes there where I was allowed to kind of dabble in more. Like I dabbled in photography and sculpture and life drawing. And and it was a little bit deeper of a dive than um, high school. But the one thing I had kind of always come back to, both in junior high, high school, and my first year of college, was I had a really huge love for type, for typography. Mm. I loved lettering. I loved um, just anything that was creative that had to do with lettering and pattern. And so I, I knew by the end of high school that that was called a graphic designer or a commercial artist maybe at the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that I wanted to do that because of that. I knew that you know, if I wanted to be a graphic designer, then I better get really good at lettering. And nowadays, you know, things have changed where we have computers and we, we just type a font or we look at fonts. I'm still kind of the old school person that really likes to use my own handwriting or alter my handwriting in some way and then turn that into a font. I, I still use fonts, obviously, through, you know, Adobe, but... Mm -hmm that's something that's always stayed really true to me mm -hmm. are patterns and fonts. So your art, your hand lettering is part of your art for sure. It is. And, and, and you're in all the creations that you, you make and all your writing is really inspirational. So, I mean, 
it's really hard to just call yourself a graphic designer illustrator because you do mixed media, you do textile stitch art, you do the hand lettering. I mean, there's, like, I literally like fell down the rabbit hole going into your website. Like, <laughs> hey, what has she not done? <laughs> I do. Um, you know what? I, I do a lot of different things and some of them I do better than others, but I don't know. I just have such a passion for creating and I make things up in my head. And then in order to let them go, I just have to put that out there, whether it's on paper or on canvas or some torn piece of something or stitching. I just constantly have ideas. And so you'd think that I'd be the kind of person that would have like a daily journal. Now this would be a really good tip for anyone who's listening would be when you have these really great ideas, you know, have a little notebook or um, a journal or whatever and write them down, sketch them out, get them down. Mm -hmm. For me, my ideas come so quickly that if I write them down or I put them down and I look back, I have so many new ideas that those old ones don't seem good anymore, if that makes sense. Oh yeah, definitely. So unless it's like some really great idea that I feel like, you know, came to me from, I don't know, I don't know even how to say that, but unless it's some idea that I just keep thinking and rethinking and rethinking, I usually have so many ideas that I don't write them down, mm -hmm. which is not good advice. Write your ideas down. <laughs> I know my, my, one of my college professors, my first year in, in design school said, get a black journal and this, this is your friend. You're going to use this. And I've, I've actually kept a black journal every single year since then. So I have quite a stack of journals. I think I'm, that is so cool. I love, I love it because it, it truly represents like my whole evolution and it's, it's a great place for me to work through all my yeah. ideas and sketches. I don't actually remember being told this, but it brought back a memory that when I was a junior in college, I had a type typography teacher and she said to get a black journal and start writing in it. And interestingly enough, I'm remembering it, but it's the one journal that I've kept. And in it, if I were to go get it right now, um, has nothing but inspirational quotes. <laughs> and when I look at how long ago that was as to what I'm doing in my life now, um, it's interesting that I would choose to do that. Right? Isn't that, it is. I mean, it's just, right? it, you were tapping into what you were going to continue to do for the rest of your like life. Like 30 some years later, but that's just crazy. You know, huh? if I think about it. And I also remember I had tons of Snoopy stickers in it and I love <laughs> Snoopy to this day, which is such a six-year-old thing to say. But, um, so that's interesting. And maybe, um, after our conversation and the good fortune I have to speak with you, maybe I'll go ahead and start one of those journals. Oh man, I love it. And it's so you can, it's funny. Oh, absolutely. And some, some years I can see I've done two journals. Like those were really prolific years for me. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I, it's, it's a, I don't know, for me, it's just always with me. It's kind of an interesting thing. It's like my little security blanket. I don't know. I was going to say, it's like Linus with his little, yeah. blue again, <laughs> my reference to Snoopy, all things peanuts, but so funny. no, I totally think that's a great idea. I love um, that. So, okay. So did you graduate from that school in I did. I, I graduated okay. from Iowa State University with a degree in graphic design and fine arts. Oh, okay. And so you did, uh, you did one year at the Catholic school and then you transferred? I did. Yeah, oh, okay. because I made the dean's list. So that was key. Oh, there you were, go. <laughs> you have to be really smart. You have to do the dean's list, which to them really wasn't about the grades. It was more about that I took it seriously. Exactly. And that's, you know, so of course I had to take it seriously. And I did. Because <laughs> so, I had to get out of there. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. I know. All my girls are like, I'm out of this town. <laughs> I know. You all just went to big cities. Yep. Yeah, you just, it's just a thing. Yeah, I get it. No, I totally get it. So um, when did the work begin then? So after you graduate, what was kind of, how did, how did your career start? Did you go, did you work in a creative field or did you do did. something different? I did. Um, we were lucky that when we were seniors, like every semester at Iowa State, they would have a panel and all of the teachers would go through your portfolio of what you had to date. And if they didn't feel like you could make it in the big world of art and design, 
they would offer you to go back and teach elementary education or art. And not only offer that, but really kind of push you that way. Huh. So um, it was always, every semester was always kind of a big deal to make it through to the next semester. And the, the treat that they gave at the end was that you could come back um, with your full portfolio at the end of your senior year, and they would invite different companies from all over the country to come and interview you and for either an internship or a real job. Hmm. And so I thought that was pretty fabulous and nerve wracking at the same time. Right. Um, <laughs> Cause you know, uh, they just filled union hall with no pressure. Uh, You're either going to be a teacher the rest of your life or you get yeah. to be an artist. I don't exactly I feel about that, but okay. Okay. So I've gone through four years and I might teach. Okay. All right. <laughs> so yeah, there was a little pressure there, but I think the pressure helped the good people get better and the people that really just didn't, care they just thought it sounded like fun and it would be easy kind of fall aside mm -hmm. um and i i only came to think that years later at the time i did not feel that way um so anyway i interviewed and i ended up talking a lot with a company called great advertising out of new york city and so i thought you know what that would be a great place that's a big city that sounds great um and so with that i i took that job and the unfortunate thing when I got there was that they had one of their big clients was Andrew Jurgens, and nothing against it. I love that company, but they did um, ivory dish soap with that bow. It has a bow on it. Hmm. And they decided, you know what, we're going to move you to Cincinnati, Ohio, and we're going to have you work solely on and with ivory. So the thing that I will say is I've, I've probably drawn more bows than anybody listening to your podcast or anybody <laughs> that I know ever has. And I got pretty fried on bows. Um, yeah, I bet. To this day, I don't really draw bows or wear clothes with bows. But, um, <laughs> I'm not I don't even person. want to tie a bow. It's just I don't even want to tie a bow. Like when it comes to tennis shoes, I just knot it and go. There you go. Um, I'm kidding, but um, <laughs> yeah, I got really fried on the bow. Mm. And so I was fried at that point on the bow and the blue and the bow and the blue. And um, I knew that I was young, but I also knew that I just was really bored. And I had a, a friend of mine that had graduated college invited me to come to Dallas where he had just landed a job. And so I went to Dallas kind of on a whim just to visit. And while he was at work, I went and started interviewing for jobs. And I thought, you know, if I find a job at an ad agency, I could just move to Dallas. And um, so I did, I found a job and I moved and I didn't have to do bows anymore. <laughs> and I really loved that. I had several different jobs when I was in Dallas. And um, my last one, that I really, really liked was I was an art director for Neiman Marcus. And, mm -hmm. and I loved that. It brought back, uh, it brought to me like the textures and the patterns and just a whole world of, um, you know, I love fashion. I absolutely love fashion. And it, it, at that time in my life, I was the kind of girl that only wore vintage clothes and, you know, remade my clothes and stuff like that. So being a part of that environment was really huge for me. It was just gigantic. I loved it. And, um, and then I started at night. I didn't really know anyone except that one guy. And so I ended up doing store windows for art galleries. Cause I thought, wouldn't that be a fun job? Mm -hmm. Um, well, it ended up being a lot of unpacking and, and shipping and learning how to, and doing the windows as well. But I did learn how to ship art really well, which has served me beautifully in my life now. I am a good packer shipper girl. <laughs> yeah. And I finally had one day where um, I was just so creative and I had so many great ideas and it would go in front of the, the creative director and the panel and, and they would say, we love your ideas, but we're going to take everything back to burgundy and silver, which was their corporate colors at the time. And I remember after about a year of that thinking, you know what, this isn't for me at all. Mm -hmm. I, I, 
I, it's like, it felt like where all my ideas went to die. You know, it's like, here are your good ideas. And now we're going to give them a bath in, mm-hmm. you know, burgundy and silver. So have fun with that one. Mm-hmm. And it just felt like everything got dummied down. And, um, mm-hmm. I was in my late twenties then. And I went in and I told the creative director, you know what? I think I'm going to quit and just make handmade cards. And he looked at me and smiled. His name was Tom. And he said, that's a really romantic idea. And I said, really? Okay. It's a and weird said, statement. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I said, what makes that, what, what, how is that romantic? And he said, well, I think you're, you know, you're a very talented designer, but I think it's really naive of you to think that you're going to quit. You're going to go make handmade green cards and make money in the world. <laughs> and I said, okay, but I am, and this is my two week notice. And so he called me back in like, I don't know, three, four days later and said, I also wanted to tell you after thinking about this, it's like, I'm married now. I have a wife, I have kids and I could never quit what I'm doing. And he said, I really admire the fact that you're going after what it is you want to do. You're listening to your gut and you're doing it. So I commend you for that. And I feel like I kind of reprimanded you more than encouraging you. I want you to know, I encourage you and you should do that. If you ever want to come back, the door's open, but go do that. You know, that's interesting because, um, he was just probably a little bitter that he wanted to go do that. And here you're like, I'm going to go do this. <laughs> right. And, and I didn't have all of the yeah. responsibilities that he did. Right. Right. So, well, those handmade cards did just okay for you. <laughs> they did okay. Is this, kinda, I, is this, you know? this pre, this is still kind of pre-internet, right? This is. Uh, oh yeah. It's all so. pre-internet. And so I, I knew enough that I made some cards and I put them in a vintage suitcase and I went to the coolest gallery I knew of, which was called Ken Knight Gallery, which I think is still in Dallas, Texas. And I marched in and I asked for Ken Knight and I opened my vintage suitcase with all my handmade cards. And he's like, absolutely. Yes. Put my cards in. And then he helped me find galleries all over to put my cards in. And I made each one at a time, which is a laborious task. And, um, that's interesting I, that you chose to go to an art gallery instead of like a stationary store. I know. I didn't even think of it. And like at uh-huh. that time I always went to papyrus and, you know, bought cards and, um, you know, they had nice card shops in, in Texas and Dallas and I didn't, I thought I'm going to a gallery and it might be because I did gallery windows. I didn't do gallery windows for Ken Knight, but I just went to a place I've always been the kind of person that when I go to a place, if I love it, then I want to somehow be connected with it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Like that, that seems bigger than me. So I want to get a piece of that and I want to feel like I, I always have really big goals and I always chase them. So, and the cards are, we're all individually handmade. So it kind of made sense that they would be at a gallery than a, a place like right. Papyrus where- but you end up at some point you do work with papyrus, correct? I do. I did. I, um, yeah, I ended up doing these cards and, and then I ended up meeting a man and a boy, whatever, and man, I guess at that age. And, um, we both thought we wanted to move and we looked at where to move and we saw Minneapolis, Minnesota, was cold, but had um, headquarters of Target, which was, you know, wildly creative. Um, By this time, the internet's kind of coming in. So at 29, I moved to Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I hired a rep and a card rep. And that rep took my line of handmade cards to the National Stationery Show. Mm-hmm. and that's in New York the New York that was in New York yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. and he took my line and I was you know I was very naive about the whole thing all I knew is I knew how to make these cards and I loved it mm-hmm. and so he came back and he was a great rep he had it all lined out that you know every month he had the orders so I was for 12 months I would have orders but what I didn't anticipate was all of the orders and so I had so many orders. It was crazy. I mean, it went really, really well. And I was, I was so excited, but 
again, each one was handmade. Mm, that's crazy. And, so, and I didn't really have a studio. I kind of was you know, on a porch, you know, <laughs> it was just, ugh. and at that time we were renting and so I told myself I would take the money minus the taxes and I would put a down payment on a house and that's what I would use the money for. And that's exactly what I did. Wow. And so once we got the house and then I was like, you know what, I'm going to go back to being a graphic designer. I'll still make cards for some of these galleries. And, um, but I did, I did leave the rep and I ended up just doing some cards for some of the galleries. And at that time, I was able to get some of my handmade cards into papyrus and into bigger like chains and corporations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that was really helpful because I just kept those key accounts rather than making them for all over. I was into a lot of um, museum gift shops seemed to be a big hit at that time. And I, I kind of let it go. I, I did about maybe a quarter of the cards and I went after doing graphic design and, and stuff for like Target and some of the bigger ad agencies in Minneapolis. And that was super fun. I loved it. There was so much creative freedom in being a freelancer at that time. And I think there's so much to be said about having, not to interrupt you, but I don't want to lose the thought. This came up in another episode too, about um, having a graphic design background and being an artist. It's, um, I mean, you have to be an artist <laughs> to be both, but to have um, the skills that you use in graphic design, like you said earlier, understanding typography and how to lay out something or do a logo design yeah. is so helpful in the other, on the other side of being you know, a painter or a mixed media artist as well. So those two really marry very nicely together. I couldn't agree with you more. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more because I've always, even when I've been in the middle of like, okay, I'm gonna switch it up that foundation of being a graphic designer mm -hmm. and learning the things that I learned, even art history that people probably mm -hmm. went through, mm -hmm. all of that feels like it has given me a really good place to stand mm -hmm. in. And I can always go back to that. Right. right. Always. It's like always there. It's just mm -hmm. like a, a, you know, I don't know. It's yeah. Like a nice, it's like going home, you know, and now, right. Home. Exactly. I, I, I feel the same way. It's also, um, I think it's somewhat important for artists that are fine artists to even know the basics because nowadays, if you're going to submit to uh, an online gallery or if you're showing your work in social media, you need to have, know those things, you know, how to work it in Photoshop and, and um, know the difference between RGB and CMYK and yeah. just even the most basic things. If I was telling a young artist, I would say, make sure you take a, a solid graphic design course. So it will really help you in your business going forward. I would totally agree. I think one of the things that I, I see is that I think a lot of times someone will get the Adobe suites or just have, you know, an, a Mac computer and instantly because you have um, Illustrator or um, InDesign or Photoshop, immediately um, you think that, well, I'm a graphic designer. And <laughs> I, I think that there, I know, right? It is funny. It is funny. And I say this with like all the love in my heart, but I, I just, I always have issues with that because um, I think that you really need to have a very learned education on that. I don't think that you're a good artist because you can download a clip art and put a word with it. I don't mm -hmm. think that makes you a graphic designer, um, yeah. at least not the kind of graphic designer that I would ever aspire or mm -hmm. have wanted to be. Uh, it's funny. I remember when, um, cause I, that was you know, part of my degree was graphic design. And I remember when I graduated Mac computer had come out and I, yes, was, exactly. I just totally aged myself, but you know, and I know. had their, you know, page maker and yes. <laughs> Cork Express Braille and, draw. and I went, Oh my God, I have this degree and I'm not going to have a job because everyone can do their own yep. service now and everything. Yep. And then everybody thought they could. And then yes. a year later I was like, Oh my God, I need help. Can you do this? Can you design this? And I was like, Oh, phew. okay. <laughs> I know. Right. I still yeah, have a job. I actually um, freelanced at J.C. Penney when I was in Dallas, and I remember they they gave me some work, and I was just like, "Oh my 
buckets. I have to do this on the computer. And they were actually gracious enough that they sent me to training on the computer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually got that too at the time I was doing advertising and marketing for a company and got to go to Macworld and see Pixar yes. when they just came out. And yes. It was really a, an exciting time when, when all of that was going on. And, and I liked that I had the old school stuff to combine. I mean, me I, I, too. I still think that's pretty, pretty groovy. And depending on who I meet face to face, sometimes I admit that and sometimes I don't because I like <laughs> having people think I'm younger than I am, but I you know agree. I mean? vanity. We are um, young girl. <laughs> we are young. Absolutely. We're young. But I know it's I, like when you, you're on the stuff and it's like cut and paste and like, no, really exactly. I, I know what, I know, <laughs> right. Ruby lifts. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. Dodge and burn. Yeah, actually, uh, exactly. exactly. <laughs> or, or, um, what's the other thing that I did a lot of, um, in the, oh, I think it was, was it scanning when you were in the dark room? And, uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. And that was fun. Or setting type by hand, really. Oh, yeah. I remember so, that, printing it all out and having to set it all straight by hand. Oh, that's crazy, Pam. The wax on the back. Maybe. <laughs> okay, so let's, 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 let's go forward a little bit. Cause Absolutely. Because I, I am like, uh, I am just so, I, I don't even have words for all the different things that you have going on. Um, let's talk about this fabric collection because I... Well, first of all, I mean, you have online classes, you have a brand new fabric line that you just launched. You obviously have the stationary line with these gift tags that are like insane pieces of artwork. And then you have the stitched art, which is a whole nother amazing art form. And then you've been published in all these different, you know, Somerset magazines, one of my favorite favorites and on and on and on. So, but the latest, greatest thing that you just did was the, the fabric line. So let's talk about how that all came about for you. Absolutely. Thank you. I, um, I, as I've been saying, I love pattern. I love, you know, design. I love all that stuff. And I really love giving back in, um, whatever ways I can figure out, but how to send positivity, strength, hope, goodness, um, believing in yourself. Um, I like those messages and I like finding different ways to send those out into the world. So I have chosen to do that via social media and I've done that for probably 10 or 11 years now. Mm -hmm. I do that either with just words or I do that with my art. And I have always followed free spirit fabrics. Um, one, because they had a designer and still do, but I think she's kind of going through a little bit of retirement only to go on to some other things. But Amy Butler is her name. I've always admired mm -hmm. her. I've always loved her graphicness. She's married to another designer, David Butler. And as a team, it was really cool to see the feminine and masculine side come together and create this world around her. And so I have followed that for 20 years, a long time. And I've always thought, you know what? I should be a fabric designer. I should be a fabric designer. Well, I've designed fabrics for when I was at Penny's, when I was at um, Neiman's, I designed fabrics for, as a freelance person for Pair One Imports, for Ralph Lauren. I've done a lot of fabric design, but never with my name on it, never with mm -hmm. a company saying, mm -hmm you validate this, we are going to have you as one of our designers. Right, right. So I have this class called vision boards because every year I do a vision board or maybe several times a year. It's not like, a, you know, on January 1st, I do a vision board. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had done a vision board of things that I just like to have come to fruition in the next six months. And I put free spirit fabrics at the top because I knew that I have every book Amy Butler's ever done and I knew their designers and, um, there's another one. I'm going to just kill her name and I feel badly for this, but it's, I think it's Natalie Lite and it's Natalie spelled like you'd spell Natalie. The last name is L E T E with a little, um, mm -hmm. little accent over it. She lives in Paris and she is a designer for free spirit fabrics. If, if the listeners don't know who she is, follow her. She is just insane. Like her stuff is so cool. Like just to launch her line, she'll build a giant cat head. I mean, she's <laughs> crazy, crazy I'll, cool. I will link, I'll link all of this in the show. Oh God, love you for that. Thank you. She's really phenomenal. So once I saw that she had gotten on board, I was like, that's it. I'm going after her. 
them. So for me, going after means I um, I designed a, a lookbook of sorts, which is a little catalog about me. I made up lines of I made a spirit warrior line. I made a soft line for younger children. I made like three, four different lines, and then I created a catalog and I had it printed professionally. And I used that to send out to places that I would like to license with. And I also put in any of my art prints, um, a few of my cards. I have 110 cards, so I don't send 110 cards. That might be overkill. Um, <laughs> but I do create really cool packages. I buy these craft boxes, um, like nine by 12, and I hand paint them, and then I put the stuff in it. So I, tr I really do trick out the package. Um, because I wanted to get noticed and they get so many packages, I'm sure. And I also hand paint the outside of the envelope and everything that it goes in. So I make sure that it's not just going to land on a desk and get shoved away. I'm just and sitting here I, smiling, like, <laughs> like you're, you're going, uh-huh, uh-huh. I can totally see what this package looks like. I mean, you have to trick it out or I'm Agreed. just picturing it laying right. on someone's desk with like 22 other things and they never see it. And then you think like, well, why didn't I get called back? Wasn't I good enough? It's like, mm -hmm. yes, you're good enough, but they just were too busy and couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. So I make sure that at least it gets seen. And then I know like, yes or no, it's whatever. Um, so I did that. I sent it in January and I didn't hear anything. So January goes by February, March, April, and I'm still not hearing anything, but honestly, I'm so busy that I don't even really realize that I haven't heard anything except when I start to think about how I want to do fabrics. And I'm like, Hmm, never heard anything. Um, one thing I do is when I send a package out, I will send out, I will keep the, the receipt from the post office, put it on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, put it on the inside of a cabinet door in my studio. I will write what I sent on it. I will put the date on it and I'll hang it there. Hmm. Okay. And to me, that's like my little board of wants. And I look at that, you know, I'll open it, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'll see that I sent it and when, and that will spark like, oh, I sent her that package then. Really? So I did that and I sent, I followed up with an email and didn't hear anything. Followed up with a second email, didn't hear anything. I was like, great. Now, like, now this is weird. So then finally, six months later, I get an email back that says, we really are interested in your line. We think you're fabulous and we'd like to schedule a call. So then I'm thinking, well, that's cool, but geez, it took a long time. Kind of that. And um, ended up, what happened is Free Spirit Fabrics was being sold to another company. Mm. They're now owned by a fourth generation fabric company out of New York City. And um, Free Spirit Fabrics, their corporate headquarters is actually in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So I started with a conversation on the phone with their creative director. And by the end of it, I'm feeling pretty good about it. And I said, so... And, and I also have advice that if you don't know something and you want to know something, don't think about, like, don't hang up and say, I wish I would have. Just be brave, stand up and ask. So I said, so it sounds like you guys would like to license me. <laughs> and, you know, like I, yeah. I wasn't going to hang up and wonder. <laughs> Right. And so I said, it sounds like you guys are interested and would like to license me. And she said, actually, we have your contract right here and I can email it to you when we hang up. We want to license you. That's awesome. I love that. So I think, you know, there's a good story in my little eight minutes of talking about that. <laughs> no, you know, that there. is a really great story. It's about perseverance and, and like not having, letting the self-doubt get in there. That right. thing happened, that businesses get sold and, you know, the CEO leaves and it yes. shifts all the time and don't take it personally. But if you know that you presented something that is it's off the charts like that, you will get a response and, right. it's, and you got to follow up. If you don't, you the answer is no. Up. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I totally agree. And so then it was fast tracked. Then it was like, okay, well, we're already three months behind because blah, blah, blah. Oh and goodness. You know, <laughs> like in my brain, I'm week. I know. And in my brain, I'm thinking, I'm not behind at all, man. I was on this, you know, and I'm like, okay. So, um, I have been painting these, these female paintings that are 
um, I've called them spirit warriors. And those are I've, my favorites. I love them. Thank you. Yeah. They are mine too. I have to say they come from a really great place. And um, usually yeah. when I'm dealing with something or want something, or I'm just thinking about how I feel about bigger things in life, they come out as a spirit warrior. Ooh, and so that. talking with um, Free Spirit Fabrics, the one thing I wanted to agree with was that I could keep my vision true to my vision and that it wouldn't get skewed and wouldn't end up in burgundy and silver, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of a thing. <laughs> so they said, yes, but we can't call her a spirit warrior because warrior might not be politically correct. And I can mm -hmm. see that. So we went with spirit of something. And so I will always each year have a core collection that will be around spirit of something. This one in particular, the garden, it um, just launched at the Houston International Quilt Market, as you had mentioned, thank you. And it will be um, actually shipping out in June of 2020. So it's a perfect time for a spring line. It's the perfect time for the positivity that goes around her. Mm. And the thing I'd like to mention about my line is I wanted to be really mindful of using all of it. It's 100% um, cotton. It's really, you know, I'm trying to be mindful about how it's made and what it's mm -hmm. made from. Mm -hmm. And all of the salvages on the fabric have quotes about positivity and living a full good life and believing in yourself. Mm. So you could take off any part of this fabric and use it in a journal, use it to make something that's obviously fabric oriented, use it for um, labels on things, use it as hang tags, make greeting cards from it. It's endless and it doesn't have to just stay in a quilt world. It can easily fall over into a mixed media world. And I'm trying to push my fabric lines that way. I love that. I think that's really great. And it really ties in beautifully with your online courses that you do, especially even like the, I think you have one on Stitch Start, right? I so, do. I, I mean, do. it would make sense that you would be designing fabric and then teaching a course on Stitch Start. <laughs> so it's like- Well, and I can't tell you how many people in social media have written and gone, this would make great fabric. This would make great fabric. And I wasn't allowed to say that I was a fabric designer <laughs> until just- October 11th, I believe. And so I was just always like, thank you. Thank you. Super. And it's nice to have somebody else that's producing it. I mean, anybody can make fabric now with, right, like with spoon flour. flour. Right. Yep. But, but it's, that's a whole nother, you know, project <laughs> that you're, you know, handling. Um, it's nice to have a company that is so well known and respected and um, mindful of what they're creating and it, and they're curating really, really good top, top artists. So uh, it's nice. That's a, that's congratulations. Hey, wonderful. Hey. Wonderful. Yeah. It's, it's good because it's pushing me to grow more. Um, and in terms of learning to sew or I'm learning to actually, I've always made my own patterns and sewn with. So I'm going to expand that into learning how to write a pattern that someone else can follow and then mm. perhaps have a pattern line that can come with it. And then also continue like green cards and other kind of paper tactile things, maybe ribbon, um, that doesn't go with paper. I know, um, unless I did paper ribbon, but I want to do other lines that branch off each line. Mm -hmm. I want to have other products. So it kind of opens doors. It, mm -hmm. it depends on how far you can throw your thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, but I throw mine out pretty far. And my That's next wonderful. line, um, which is Wolf and Wags, is a dog line. <laughs> and there will be 12 SKUs that go with that. And that comes out, well, I know it's back from the mill. So it must come out in... <laughs> I don't know when it comes out now that I just said that out loud. There's a lot I don't know. Well, as designers in that, that arena, you're usually designing for the next season. So like what came out now is coming out for spring. So that would it, be winter. Yeah. Right? With that, or fall, I guess. I Let's don't go know. fall. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, but you know, I know when I was designing for companies like that, we were always a year ahead in our designs and, um, that was what was coming. Yeah, isn't that crazy? You're so <laughs> yeah. tired of it by the time it comes out. Exactly. Like, oh, like oh, I've looked at this so many times. <laughs> I know. I'm really tired of that now. So what's next for you? I mean, that's huge. I guess what's next is like spinning off into all different categories. That sounds amazing. I mean, I'm definitely like, going to go after the brand. 
Yeah. I'm definitely going after ribbons. I love ribbons. Even I like those, that kind of the washi tape, I could see you do. Yeah, like, that would be super cool. That. Mm -hmm. that would be super fun. Well, you have, you have all of the content for it. I don't see why. Why not? <laughs> I know, right? It, it's just time and just it's time. really priorities is all it is. It's just making things priorities. So I good. still do um, graphic design for a couple ad agencies in um, Minneapolis. And I have to mention this because I think it is such a fun project. But I just got a fun project this morning where I need to illustrate seven ugly Christmas sweaters. And it just made me laugh because I thought, Oh my gosh, that's going to be so easy. <laughs> so easy and such a fun one to do. That's awesome. Oh, I can't wait to see them. I know. Nothing like an ugly, <laughs> ugly Christmas sweater. I love the ugly Christmas sweater. And I'm also Sweet. developing my new online class, which will launch here in November. Oh, great. Um, it'll be my 10th one. So I'm excited, you know, to get to that double digit. So people can go to your website and it's a, it's kind of like, they can just take the class whenever the time suits them. It's not a time stamped yeah, kind of thing. It's all, um, all of my classes are just, um, you know, you can pick it up, you can start it one day and you can take it two months from now. They all have lifetime access, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. You can log into the platform that I'm with, which is Rizuku.com and you can take it at three in the morning if you want to. Um, I do have private Facebook groups with each class which is wonderful for community and I do tap in there and make sure that I look at everybody's art and give comments and give ideas if they want them but I really like having a, a, a place where it's only positive it's only goodness and it's sharing and I think you can learn so much by sharing with other like souls who mm -hmm. are kind and know that they're there for just to be kind, just to see other art, and just to be inspired. Right. And we all need that. Otherwise, we are creating and designing in a vacuum. And I do not agree more with you. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. We had this conversation, you and I, and I was so refreshed to hear that you are exactly on that page with me. Mm. I love that. Oh, this has been so wonderful. I always like to kind of wrap it all up with, I mean, you've given us so much good advice. My goodness. Thank so you. I don't know if you've got any more I can eke out of you, but, <laughs> but um, I love to ask uh, what was the best advice that was ever given to you when you were younger and just starting out? I think the best advice that was ever given to me was to just continue to really, really be myself and to not, um, compare myself to others. I've been told that. AKA throughout. the sheep with the. <laughs> hello, hello, my floating clouds that that. on there with my little. Like, I've been stick. doing that my whole life. Okay. No I know. To tell me that. But that's super not a big deal. <laughs> Although I will say that I do have, you know, I, am I always super self-confident and do I always think like, Hey, I am the, I'm the ticket. No. I, um, I do have anxieties. I do have um, all of the things that normal people have, and I do have to find ways to manage those. And so um, I think the best advice that I've been given is to be yourself and to always follow what you feel is right. And if you don't know how to do something, find somebody that can help you and will help you mm -hmm. and find somebody who you trust. Mm -hmm. and have a mentor. And if there's something that you can't understand and you can't get through, I highly recommend finding like a therapist or somebody, you know, whether it be if you're in school, you can find um, an advisor who's good um, because I've had advisors that aren't so good. But, you know, find somebody that you really admire and look up to and ask those questions and get the help that you need for all of those things. Mm -hmm. That's the best advice I've ever received. And even bad advice, I've been able to switch around like, you know, oh, that's a romantic reason to leave a big company when you're, you know, I've but even. That goes to your core belief of just follow your authentic, you know, what you want. Yes. To do, so. And your core belief is the perfect phrase. Thank you for saying that because that's exactly it. That would be the best advice I've ever been given. And I, I've listened to that. And one piece of advice that I, I truly believe in, and I actually learned through, I took one online class and um, in my life so far, 
just to kind of figure out what an online class was. <laughs> and what I learned from that class, which is so funny, is I learned, I'm counting the words, four words. Okay, so I paid a lot of money and I learned four words, but they're good words. People buy your joy. And I believe that with my whole heart. Huh. If you are happy, if you're putting your true self into something and it makes you feel good, it's going to make others feel good too. I love that. <laughs> it's simple. It's super simple. Yeah. And you can even take out the word buy. It can just be like joy is infectious. Mm -hmm. If you love what you're doing, if you believe in what you're doing, and if someone says like you can't make a career out of out of being a um, a, a sketch artist with graphite, don't listen. Do not listen. Surround yourself with other people. It's so easy to do now with Pinterest and Instagram and all of those forums. It's so easy to find other graphite artists or other tattoo artists or whatever it is that you want to do. Find those like souls, find those right people and build your own little community so that you feel nurtured and giving and loved and you can reciprocate. That's everything. I couldn't agree more. It's so, so true. Oh, this is just so true. This is so, so good. And um, a huge shout out to our friend, Christine. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know. I feel like I couldn't build her a nice enough package, to her, but I'm trying. I started yesterday. Um, I um, could not thank Christine more. And yeah, she introduced us. My beautiful human being. Christine, yeah. Love her. Well, thank you so much. This has just been great. I appreciate you so much. And I just am so grateful for all the beautiful work that you're bringing into the world and so excited to see the next more of it. I mean, it's just, you're such an inspiration. Thank you so much, Kelly. Well, I couldn't thank you more. And I feel the exact same way about you. I almost did flips if I could. When I saw your Instagram feed, I was just like, holy buckets, I need to know this person. <laughs> and I, I really think it's important to have friends, to have people that we know in our lives, that we admire, that we can support, that we can celebrate. I, I cannot stress that enough how really valuable it is to have that kind of life. It is everything. I agree. Yay! Thank you so much for joining me today. If you like this podcast and you'd like to support it even more, you can join me over on patreon.com slash Mari Robeson and become a patron of mine. If you're a patron of mine, you'll receive bonus episodes every month only for patrons. You'll also receive 20% off all the merchandise in my online shop, mariropeson.bigcartel, and you will be receiving free printables every month that will be of my artwork and they're some really fun things. You can follow along on Instagram and you can see what I'm creating just for my patrons. I would deeply appreciate it. It would help me keep the lights on and it would help me pay all the fees that it takes to put together a podcast like this so that I can keep supporting all the artists, keep bringing you great information, keep paying it forward to the next generation of artists. It's just a wonderful thing and I would really deeply appreciate your support.